Hey everyone, the Saxophone Oracle here. This week we're talking about the diminished scale. As with anything theoretical, this could easily turn into a three hour video, but I just want to talk about the basics because a lot of beginner and intermediate improvisers shy away from this scale and they really shouldn't because it's not at all complicated, it's extremely versatile, and it sounds really hip. So what I'm gonna do is explain what the diminished scale is, why it's useful, the most common places we can apply it, and I'll leave you with five basic patterns or licks so you can start experimenting with this scale in your own playing. If you're familiar with the diminished chord, then the diminished scale is very, very simple. Both of them are what we call symmetrical, so a symmetrical chord, symmetrical scale. And all this means is that the pattern of intervals that make them up just keep repeating themselves over and over again. So diminished chord is based off of the interval of a minor third. So if we take the C as our bass note, minor third above C is E flat. Minor third above E flat is G flat or F sharp. Minor third above that note is A. And there you get the four note diminished chord. So minor thirds. If you add a minor third above A, well then we're back at C, E flat, G flat, A. It just keeps repeating, therefore symmetrical. Because of the symmetry, even though we have 12 keys in music, we really only have three diminished chords and three diminished scales, which makes them quite simple to learn and apply and get under our fingers. If we look back at the C diminished chord that we just talked about, C, E flat, G flat, A, well, we go back to C, everything keeps repeating. So the C diminished chord is the exact same thing as the E flat diminished chord, the exact same notes as G flat, and the exact same notes as A. Same thing with the scales. So if you learn one scale or one chord, you've taken care of four keys right there. We go to the semitone up, we go to the root of C sharp, well then we have C sharp, E, G, and B flat in minor thirds. So there's your next four chords, which are all the same, and they have the same corresponding scale. Finally, we have D, and the minor third above that is F, A flat, B. So there's all 12 keys, but only three chords and three scales. It's brilliant. Now that we know what a diminished chord is, well, how do we get a diminished scale? Very simple. We take that diminished chord, so C, E flat, G flat, A, and what we do is we insert a passing tone between each chord tone. And the note that we choose to insert is the one that is a semitone below each of these chord tones. So C, a semitone below E flat is D, a semitone below G flat is F, a semitone below A is A flat, and then a semitone below the root is B. It's as simple as that. Diminished scale, C, D, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, A, B, C. If you prefer to think of these things intervallically, then you'd start on C, and the pattern is tone, semitone, tone, semitone, over and over and over again. So again, if you learn one diminished scale, you've actually learned four. Do the same thing on C sharp, the same thing on D. Go tone, semitone, tone, semitone. We're doing a semitone approach to each and every chord tone. So this is the C diminished chord followed by the C diminished scale. <laughs> I've also heard people speak about something called the half whole diminished scale, where the interval pattern is semitone, tone, semitone, tone. Well, guess what? It's the exact same thing as the scale we just looked at. It just depends what scale degree you start on. So we looked at the C diminished scale, C, we go up a tone to D, then a semitone to E flat, then a tone to F, semitone to G flat. Well, if we start this scale on the second scale degree of D, then all of a sudden the interval pattern becomes semitone, tone, semitone, tone. But it's the exact same scale, and I find it much easier to think about three scales instead of six scales, and the reason I prefer the whole half diminished scale is because of what we talked about before. The whole half diminished scale better outlines the diminished chord. We approach each chord tone by semitone. So when we're applying this as improvisers, as composers, doing our voice leading, that better outlines the diminished chord. 
Now that we know what a diminished scale is and how to construct it, I want to talk about why this is such a useful scale and look at some of the most common places where we would play it. Obviously, the most common place to play a diminished scale would be over a diminished chord. If you're playing the correct diminished scale that corresponds to the chord, it's practically impossible to play a wrong note. So this is what it sounds like. The reason why this scale is so practical is because of the symmetry. No matter what chord we're playing over, there's usually a portion of the diminished scale that's going to fit over that chord very nicely, and our ears are drawn to symmetry. So even though the diminished scale doesn't fit every chord perfectly, our ears will often forgive or overlook any dissonances because the symmetry of the line is so strong and compelling. And because of this, if, if we're thoughtful about how we use voice leading, then we can use a diminished scale in lots and lots of places. We can even play it over a major chord. Here's an example of Sonny Stitt doing it on a B-flat major rhythm changes called the Eternal Triangle. Other than playing this scale over a diminished chord, I want to talk about two very common places where we can apply this scale and where it will sound great. The first is over a minor 7 flat 5 chord, which is also known as a half diminished chord. If you're not familiar with these, I have an entire video dedicated to minor 7 flat 5 chords I encourage you to check out. But the difference between a minor 7 flat 5 chord and a fully diminished chord is one note. So even though the diminished scale doesn't voice lead perfectly over a minor 7 flat 5 chord, the symmetry mixed with all the notes that they share in common make it an obvious choice to use. And a lot of players choose to play the diminished scale over a minor 7 flat 5 chord instead of, say, the Locrian scale, which is what jazz education would tell us is the logical corresponding scale. This is an example of what it sounds like over a minor 7 flat 5 chord. The next most common place to use this scale, believe it or not, is over a dominant 7th chord, which also would include the 2-5-1 chord progression. Whether it's in major or minor, it works amazingly. Now this next part is a little bit theoretical. It might push your brain to the limit a bit, but remember, it's YouTube. If I'm going too fast, you can always pause and go back to it. But the key to making a diminished chord sound good over the 2-5-1 chord progressions or over dominant 7th chord all again comes down to symmetry and the amount of common notes they share. If we look at a dominant 7th chord, let's take C7 as our example. We have C, then we have E, then we have G, and then we have B flat. So E, G, and B flat, those are all a minor third apart. So we have a diminished triad over top of that C bass note. Now, dominant 7th chords, it's very common that we add an extension. So if we choose the flat 9 in the key of C, that would be D flat. So we have C, E, G, B flat, and D flat, which is another minor third above B flat. So we have an entire diminished chord over top of the C bass, which is why anytime you have a dominant seventh chord, a diminished scale can sound amazing. It's going to sound really strong and sound really, really convincing. Now, I mentioned two five ones earlier. Most of us know that on a two five one, you can play the same Mixolydian scale or the same Dorian scale. The two chord and the five chord are pretty much interchangeable. 
Therefore, you can use that same diminished scale over the entire 251 and resolve it to the one chord, and it sounds amazing. Before finishing up today, I wanted to share with you five really common diminished patterns that we can play over a 251 chord progression. I'm doing it over a 251 in major. They'd probably work equally well if it was a 251 in minor. I'm going to put the PDFs of these for free download on the website as usual, www.thesaxophoneoracle.com. I encourage you to go grab it, check it out, and start experimenting with them. The first lick you might recognize from the Dizzy Gillespie tune called Groove and High. This is at the very end of the melody, and it sounds great on a 251. The second lick is one which is commonly referred to in jazz as the David Baker lick. I talked about this lick in the video I did about uh, did John Coltrane and Charlie Parker play licks. So here's the David Baker diminished lick. The third lick is simply playing the diminished scale in thirds. This is something that Sonny Stitt did a lot, so the first time I'm just gonna simply play it in thirds over the 251, and on the second pass, I'm gonna play it the way Sonny Stitt usually played it by doing a little 16th note triplet turn on each note. <laughs> The fourth pattern is basically playing up the entire diminished scale over the two chord and the five chord and then resolving it down to the major chord. Just playing the scale all the way up and resolving it down at the end. The fifth and final lick I wanted to show you, this is something that the great baritone saxophone player Pepper Adams used to do, and he would do all kinds of things with the diminished scale, but this one, he takes advantage of, there's an interval of a major seven within the diminished scale, and so he liked to do something like this lick. I'm the Saxophone Oracle. We were talking about the diminished scale. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. As always, thank you so much for continuing to watch. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing, send me a thumbs up, a like, share the video, leave a comment. All these little things make it so that YouTube will make my videos more available and easier to find for everyone else out there in the internet. Thank you so much. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.